All right, everyone. Today we're going to talk about solving multi-step inequalities with variables on both sides, which is to say big, gigantic, greater than, less than statements. It's really easy to do them. We're just going to follow the same process we've been following the whole time. If you don't know the process by now, you've seriously got to catch up if you're in class. If you're not in class and watching this, then there's probably other videos on this wherever you're watching this that will explain the process. But I'll go over it one more time very quickly, the short version, so everybody who knows it doesn't have to bother with it. The first step when we solve inequalities or equations is we want to draw a line. Draw the line down the equal sign. It separates them one side from the other, makes everything easy. The next step is to uh, we'll call it baby goes bathroom. Basically, it's just a reminder to do the distributive property before anything else because the distributive property dominates. Uh, the next step is clean your room. You want to combine like terms on the same side of the line. So once you draw the line, it's easy to tell whether things are on the same side or not. The next step is uh, pork chops and applesauce. That's when variables are on the same, are on opposite sides of the line. We've got to move one, uh, the variable term on one side, put it on the other. Really, you're eliminating it on that side and doing and adding it to the other side in a positive or negative way. But that's neither here nor there. Parties over is where I have a variable term and an integer or a number on one side and a number on the other. We want to get rid of that non-variable term first and then the final step would just be finish it, which in most cases, um, or finish him either way, uh, I use the finish him because that was the original Mortal Kombat soundbite. But um, it, usually it's a multiply or divide, occasionally it's an add or subtract, depending on the setup of the problem. That's neither here nor there. Let's do a couple problems, you'll see it. Uh, these are gigantic inequalities. Now, I will say that don't be afraid of these inequalities. They're not really all that hard. Just do what you can, and I'm sure everything will work out peachy keen. So the first step, of course, is to draw the line. Well, here's that inequality, so I'm going to draw the line right there. Then I want to uh, see if there's any baby goes bathroom. There's no distributive here, so I don't need to worry about it. I can avoid distributive property altogether. The next step, I want to clean my room, so find anything that is a like term on the same side. I'm going to underline all the x terms just so I can remind myself where they are. As you can see, there's lots of non-x terms over here, so it's kind of like the skins team. We're going to combine them. We're going to combine them just like it says to in the problem. 6 plus 3 plus 3, so that would be 6 plus 6, which last time I checked was 12. So I'm going to put 12 here. I'm going to bring down this negative 4x. And that's positive 12, so I'm going to put plus 12. Uh, from here, what I need to do is, uh, this is pork chops and applesauce, so I have variables on both sides of the equation. I need to make sure that I move one of them or eliminate one of them. I'm going to get rid of this minus 4x. I'm going to add 4x to both sides, because the opposite of minus is plus. By the way, the reason I added instead of multiplying, the relationship between these two terms is plus. So it's an add-subtract relationship in this case would be a subtract because remember you can only use the sign in front of the number you're working on this sign is irrelevant to this sign other than it tells us what type of operation we're performing between them so these cancel 4 plus 4 is 8 now we're at parties over here's me I'm the X here's my friend here's my friend of friend that dude's gonna talk to me about his crappy Facebook I just want to get rid of him so let's get rid of minus 4 by adding 4 to both sides Bring down 8x. 12 plus 4 would be 16. Now, this is the last step. So, this is finish them. When it's 8x, that means times because they're touching. 8 times x to get rid of 8 times. I divide by 8x. And 16 divided by 8 is 2. Now, there's the issue with the inequality. In inequality, circle that last thing that you did if it's multiply or divide, most of the time that it happens to be. If this is a positive number, both of these, which they'll both have to be the same, then this stays the same. So in this case, they stay. If they were negative, we'd flip this over, but we don't have to do that here. So I have this is my final answer. Now, I'm going to have to graph this thing, so I'm going to do a little cheat graph here on the side. Here's zero. I don't know why I drew it that way. That was really dumb. I was thinking it was negative 2 for some reason. Anyway, uh, my first step when I graph, I want to make a circle at the number. 
So there. Uh, then I have to fill or unfill. This is There's no line underneath this. This is just a greater than, less than sign. No equal to, so I'm going to leave it open. Now, remember, in the final step where we draw the arrow, you, this is the star of the show. So whatever it says is what we're going to do. This says x is greater because it's in the big end. So greater numbers than 2 go up this way. So I'm going to draw my arrow out like that. That was a terribly uh, drawn number line, or this would look great. Sorry about that. So let's go on to the next one. All right, let's look at this one. Um, you may have seen like a little, there may have been a little glitch in the video. I actually had to edit a pieces together. Um, the camera just went weird. Anyway, um, so let's do this one. First step, we're going to draw the line. This is one, there's no distributive property. Uh, so I'm going to combine like terms. I'm going to do the right side first just to make a point about the next section. Negative 8 minus 6 is negative 14n. Now, in this one, you know that negative 8 plus 8, or you should know, is, gives you 0, because if we go all the way 8 down in the negative end and then go 8 back towards the positive, we end back at 0. In most cases, when we do that, we're not going to write anything down. We'll just eliminate that term completely. In this one, it's, completely, it's very important for me to put the 0 there. That way, I can finish the last step. So I'm going to put 0. Once you do that, it makes things a lot easier on yourself. This is times because they're touching, so I'm just going to divide. Those cancel out, obviously. Bring down your n. Now, this step, by the way, 0 divided by anything is 0. This step, which I circled because it's a multiply divide in the last step, is important for me to circle because in this case, this is negative, which means this needs to flip over. So I'm going to flip it uh, so it looks the other or faces the other direction. So I've got that going for myself. Now I'm going to draw the graph. Here's a zero. Here's a two. Here's a negative two. All irrelevant points. Now uh, the first thing I need to do is make a circle at the number right here. Fill or unfill. Well, there's a line under here. So if I had to do more work to write it, I'm going to do more work to graph it. Also, that means that zero is part of the solution set. So it's like with the day you turn 18, you can vote. So 18 would be circled in, and everything above that age would count. Now, most of the time, some of you may have been told to go the way the arrow is pointing. That's a lie. Don't do that. Look at the variable like it's the main character of the story. What's this person doing? n is less than because it's on the little end. So we're going to draw the graph to show what n is doing. Don't worry about what zero is doing n is less than. Less than goes this way. So my final answer looks essentially just like that. No big deal. Let's look at another one. Two to go and then we're done. So uh, this is one with distributive properties. So the first step I'm going to draw the line. I'm also going to make a little extra step here that I don't often make. This R has no number in front of it. It really can get confusing sometimes. You'll lose numbers if you don't put them there. So I'm just going to go ahead and make an extra line, which is the 1 in front of the R. That way I know it's 1R. Now it's baby goes bathroom, so I do distributive property next. 8 times 7 is 56. 8 times 2 is 16R. Uh, then I bring everything else down. Now I'm at like the pork chops and applesauce stage. So these are separate. So I'm going to get rid of this one. So to get rid of minus 1r, I'm going to add 1r. I'm going to do the same thing here. Remember, you can't add to the 56. It doesn't have an r with it. Say these are $5 bills and these are $1 bills. If you have 56 $5 bills, it's a lot. More than it would be if you had 56 $1 bills. So be careful. Uh, 16 plus 1, uh, last time I checked, was 17. I've got this, this is party's over, here I am, here's my friend, here's that weirdo. So I'm going to get rid of the friend of friend. In order to get rid of plus 56, which is not because of this, but would be because this is supposed to be plus. So I'm going to subtract 56. Oops. Negative 68, sorry about that. I'm going to bring down my 17R. This is times because they're touching, so when the hamster touch, they multiply. Same with numbers and variables, so I'm going to divide by 17. Sometimes you think, well, how come this isn't negative? Because because over here, you see, you had plus, and then you changed the sign, right? I didn't change the sign. It's a different operation. The opposite of 
adding is subtraction. So I'm not really actually changing the sign. So in here, the opposite of multiply isn't negative divide. It's just divide, like divide 6 by 6. You get 1. You don't have to divide 6 by negative 6. That doesn't make any sense. So uh, these cancel out. This gives me negative 4. Now, I'm going to circle this part, not the 68, not the negative 4. All of that is irrelevant to the next point. Only the 17 that's positive matters. That means I can keep this the same. So when I, I get this answer, r is greater than or equal to negative 4. So when I draw it, I'm going to go to negative 4. I'm going to really super cheat on this graph. Um, make a circle. That's the first step. Second step is fill it or unfill it. Well, there's a line underneath it, so I'm going to fill it in. Now, I'm going to focus on the star of the show. R is greater, because it's next to the big end. R is greater than. Numbers get greater than going to the right. So in this case, I'm actually following the go the way the line points thing. But it's just a coincidence. So that's the final answer. One more. Just because it's kind of a weird one that has some little honk, like kind of a hinky thing in it that I don't like to not cover. Now, uh, in this one, first step, of course, is to draw the line. The thing that's weird about this problem is the distributive property, because it just has a negative. What that means is negative 1, because there's one parentheses set, if you want to do it that way. Uh, there's a couple ways you could deal with that. You could do the distributive property now as normal, or you can remember, anytime there's a negative outside that dis uh, the parentheses, change both signs. So both these negatives will become positive. If one was a positive, it would become negative, blah, blah, blah. But I'll just do it the regular way. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Negative 1 times negative 7 is 7. Bring everything down. Pork chops and applesauce. I'm going to get rid of this plus 3x. I don't know why I marked these out. I was losing my mind there. It should negative 5x. Sorry about that. It's jumping ahead. Now I need to get rid of this minus 33, so I'm going to add 33. Uh, last time I checked, that would be 40. I'm going to divide by negative 5, because it's times. Circle this ahead of time, just so I'm already thinking about it. 40 divided by negative 5 is 8. Bring down my x. Now, this is negative. Since this is negative, don't worry that this is positive. That's irrelevant. That's going to flip. By the way, the reason that this is negative and it flips is because it's already on the x. So it's like we're changing the direction that x is facing. If you're facing north and something is on your left, and you turn around to face south, then that thing that was on your left is on your right. Just do it sometime. Trust me, it's on the other side of your body. So it's like we're changing the direction that x is coming from in its relationship to this greater than, less than. So it used to be kind of like it was less than, but we had to flip it over to show it's greater than because it used to be facing south, but now, since we got rid of that negative, it's going to face uh, north. So anyway, graph time, negative 8. Make a circle. There's no line, so it's unfilled, and x is greater than, so x goes up. And that is it. That is solving inequalities with multiple steps, variables on both sides, blah, blah, and blah.